Baby, you don't know what you do to me Between me and you, I feel like chemistry So, it's Valentine's Day And I just found out that your boy that got released from jail That wanted to be with me so freaking bad Is out here paying females for sex I don't think it's hit me yet it's probably not gonna hit me for a minute, but yeah. Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Amber the Creator and we are back at it with another video. Today we're gonna go ahead and get into it in regards to me and my boyfriend from prison breaking up on Valentine's Day. So go ahead, grab your cheese and crackers, girl. We about to go ahead and get into this video now. Hey y'all. So I just want to go through and tell you guys what's been going on after you saw my last two videos that my man was coming home from jail and you know seeing how it was going and leading up to the event of him actually coming home. Well girl I got something for you. I got something for you okay. So let me just tell you it's been a whirlwind. Like it's been a whirlwind in such a short amount of time. Today is the 17th, which is Saturday. He got out February 6th. So that was a week and a half ago, right? He got out February 6th on a Tuesday. I already kind of told you guys what happened um, between there and a couple of days. Like last week I filmed the video. Um, so you guys kind of knew what happened leading up to last week. Well, here's another week. So... It's been going okay with him living with me. Like, I had to get used to, like, having someone in my house and just something different. And it's just not really my thing of, like, having people in my house, you know, being hugged up on somebody, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, fast forward to everything. Fast forward to Valentine's Day, okay? So, Valentine's Day, um, I went to work. He stayed home. He hadn't found a job yet. Um, which he told me he was doing. His brother was supposed to bring his car, which never happened. Just all these kinds of things. And let me back up a little bit. So the night before Valentine's Day, I was on his watch. Like, I had just picked up his watch and just tried the code with him in front of me. Like, I was just trying to see if the code actually worked that he had said before, like, out of his breath. And it worked. And then his messages popped up and he had a message on Messenger from Facebook, some girl named Abigail, talking about some hay and there was some more stuff I didn't get to read. I said, oh, who's Abigail? And he's like, huh? Huh? And takes his, takes his watch or whatever. And he's like, what are you talking about? Blah, blah, blah. He's like going through his watch, reading all his messages or whatever like that. And I'm like, he's like, you can see my watch whenever you want. Like, I don't care. Blah, blah, blah. Abigail's nobody. She's, she's the girl I'm trying to get clothes from, from Polo and still for me and blah, blah. I'm like, what? Like, whatever, bro. I was just like, I'm over it, okay? Next day is Valentine's Day. I go to work. He doesn't say anything to me. Um, I, I think he texts me at work or something. Just some random stuff or whatever. And then he doesn't say Happy Valentine's Day till like 10 o'clock um, via text. And I'm just like, whatever. We're supposed to go get Texas Roadhouse or whatever. And I'm asking him, like, what do you want to eat? He's like, whatever you want to eat. I'm like, oh my God, like stop with this, whatever I want to do. Like be a man and pick what you want. And I was like, well, do you like chicken or steak? Because I can pick you a meal if you tell me if you like chicken or steak. I don't care. I'm just like, whatever. Anyways, so I'm at work. It's like the end of the day. It's like 2.30 or whatever. And I'm like, something tells me to make a, a Facebook and try to message him just to see if he's talking to other girls. And usually I'm not like this. I'm not a jealous type. I'm not a clingy type. I'm none of those. But something told me to do it. So I make this fake page. And I message him. I'm like, hey, what's up? You're cute. And hold up. Let me get my phone so I know what exactly was said. L let me get that first. Because I have the pictures. Uh, let me see. Okay. So I was just like, hey, what part of Minneapolis do you stay in? You're super cute. And he's like, I stay in wherever, you know, he stays at now. I was like, oh, you in the nice part? He's like, yeah, I stay in the condos next to the outlet. And I'm like, oh, I've never been out that way. He's like, I love really good women just looking for a real woman. Like, that was his next thing. Like, he's so illiterate, first of all. So fucking illiterate. 
And so he's like, I love really good women just looking for a real woman. And I'm like, what you mean by love? Like, you love really good women. Like, I love really good. What does that mean, you know? He's like, I just been getting played with these Apple cards and send my money. And I'm like, huh, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, it's been crazy trying to meet someone real and they telling me that they ain't come to chill. I sent them gas money and card and got played. I lost $500 last night, but I stay in the mall. You lost $500 last night? You trying to give people gas money and cards? Like, what does that even mean? Like, what are we even talking about here? What are we even talking about? And I said, damn, girls is crazy. Be careful out here. And I'm like, he's like, what's up with you? And I'm like, um, what you looking for? And he's like, someone that's real. And I'm like, well, I'm real. And he's like, what are you looking for? I was like, I think I'm looking for the same thing as you. So he's like, so what's up? You want to take my number? So he gives me his number. And I'm like, well, I can't text. I just have, what, you know, Wi-Fi on my, on my tablet. And he's all like, do you want to come over? Where do you stay at? Do I want to come over? Like, what? And I said, I live in Fridley, which is like super far across the, across the way. And I was like, you have roommates or do you live alone? He goes, I live by myself. And I'm like, you want to come to Fridley? And he's like, how far is that from where I stay? He's like, but yes, I, what do I have? But he's like, yes, what do I have to do? And I said, just come see me. And I said, he said, send the address. So I sent this fake address of an apartment complex or whatever. And he's like, can I see a picture of you? And I sent him a picture or whatever like that. I sent him a picture. The next thing he says is, what is it going to cost me? What is what going to cost you? First of all, like, are you serious? And so I'm like, this boy is thinking like I'm trying to get money for sex. Like I didn't expect that whatsoever. Like not whatsoever. So I play into it. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be two fifty. And he's like, what do I get with that? And I was like, you get everything that you want or whatever. Um. And he's like, how long? And I'm like, you get two hours. Like I don't know. Like what? And it just goes on from there. And um. Then I keep trying to tell him, like, can you come over? Can you come over? Can you come over to try to get him to leave? And I forgot he can't leave because of his uh, program he's in. He's not able to leave only at certain times or whatever like that. So he ignores the messages for a little bit. Then I'm like, well, can I come over there? So he's like, yeah, come over here. Gives him my freaking address. And I said, hey, well, meet me at the outlets. I'll be over there in this amount of time or whatever like that. It's snowing, y'all. It's like two, three inches of snow that night. He, we're in the house. I'm finally home, and I'm texting him still, whatever, and he's playing into it. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go uh, play pool downstairs. I said, okay. So I'm like, let me see if this fool actually walks outside to the outlets in this damn snow. He goes out. And I see him across the balcony walking to the outlets to go meet this fake girl. I'm just like, what? What? That's right there. So what I do is at my apartments, we don't have keys. We have the electronic app where you can like give people invites to have the app to get into the doors and stuff like that. I block his access so he can't get in. I still have all his stuff, block his access. He has the phone that I bought him and the watch that I bought him. So he gets back and he's trying to get in the door. And I have it, so, and then he starts calling because you can call the apartment from the door or whatever like that. So my phone's going off just saying to open the door. And so I keep ignoring, keep ignoring, keep ignoring, and I have blocked him. And then I finally unblocked him to see if he, or I looked on my computer because my computer didn't block him. And he's like, can you let me in? Can you let me in? So I finally let him in because I'm like, it's cold outside. Like, he ain't got nowhere to go. Like, whatever. Let him in. I go, this is what's happening. 
And he's like, nah, nah, I was trying to find this man, a girl, um, you know, he was going to pay for it. He was going to pay me to get her and I was just trying to help him out, blah, blah, blah. Just all these lies. And I was like, okay, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, so let me see your phone. Let's settle this. Like, let me see your phone. And usually I don't want to see nobody's phone. Like, I really don't. And he's like, you can see my phone. You can see my phone. I don't care. If I cared, I wouldn't have the code, the code I have and blah, blah, blah. I was like, so just settle this. Like, let me see your phone then if that's the case. Like, just let me see your phone if you ain't got nothing to hide. So, of course, he goes to the bathroom, takes a minute. And I'm like, watch this fool go to the bathroom and then come and be like, here, you can have my phone. What exactly happened? He comes out, here, you can have my phone. So I look through his phone. I go through his Facebook Messenger. I go through his email. I go through his recently deleted. What do I find? He's on every dating app that you can think of. He has all these. And this was another thing that struck me was the girls on his Facebook page were all like sexy, big booty girls, like fake looking pages of just sexual stuff, you know? And so I go to his recently deleted messages. He has like 600 and something messages from one person and like multiple people. And so I undelete the message. I read them. One, he's been talking to a girl from Philly while he's been in jail, sending her letters. She wanted to marry him so that he could move to Philly and stay in her house. He's been talking to females trying to pay for sex. He's been giving out my address. He's been saying, come over, I'll send you money, I'll do this, I'll do that. He was trying to get a plane ticket from the girl in Philly to take him out, like, all this stuff. And the girl from Philly, I FaceTime her, and I'm not mad at her, I ain't mad at none of these chicks. It's him, he's the one with the problem. I FaceTime her, I'm like, hey, just to let you know, and this is Valentine's Day, y'all, Valentine's Day. I FaceTime her, I'm like, hey, just to let you know, like, he's been playing you, like, this whole time. He's been playing a bunch of females. And she's like, oh, I didn't know, you know, blah, blah. And then she sends me a picture of them on FaceTime with a D pic. And then sends me um, letters that he sent to her in jail looking like the same letters he sent me. Like, we used to talk while he was in jail all the time. I had no idea he was with all these females. No idea. As soon as you get out of jail, like you hitting up females for sex and hitting them up just to give you money and talking to them and being with them. He's over there saying, I have a house. I have a condo by myself. I'm a truck driver. I'm on the road. Like I got money. Like, bro, you're staying in my mother effing house. You ain't got no freaking money. You ain't got no job. You just got out of freaking jail. You don't have your own phone. You got two bags worth of clothes in a box. That was so devastating to me. Like, I've never, ever encountered something like this in my life. And you know what happened is when I stopped talking to him, because he got recycled at boot camp. He got extra time added on. Where he was supposed to get out January 9th or something like that. And ended up getting February 6th because he got in trouble for having minutes over the phone, so-called. And at that point, I said, I'm not talking to him. I'm done. This is God giving me an out. He's saying, leave him alone. So I blocked him for a minute. Blocked him, blocked him, blocked him. Finally, I was like, well, I feel bad. Like, where's he going to go when he gets out? What is he going to do? Like, I was going to pick him up, you know, all this stuff. He's calling me every day, multiple times a day, sending me messages on JPEG, all this kind of stuff. And I give in. I say, well, let's try it out. Like, we can see if it can work, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll be cordial. We'll try to work it out. But that was God telling me, this is your out, Amber. You need to take it. Because if you don't take it, you're in for a rude awakening. And I definitely was in for a rude awakening that this happened. I mean... It just shows me that I need to be more obedient to God and listen to what he has to tell me because I've been making the wrong decisions most of my life. And it's been hard. Like, it's been a hard couple of days. So, when that happened on Valentine's Day, we 
had our talk or whatever like that. And I was like, you got to get out. Like, you got to figure out where you're going to go because you're not staying here. I let him stay that night. And then the next morning, I was like, you got to go. So that night, he's all crying and trying to tell me, can we work this out? Blah, blah, blah. He's trying to manipulate me this whole time, like telling me lies like I'm the crazy one. I've been manipulated before by my other ex. And I thought I was crazy. I thought I was the one making the situation worse than it was, but it wasn't me. It was just him manipulating me. And this is the same exact thing Cordero did, was try to manipulate me. And I was like, I'm not falling for that again. Like, I'm too smart for that. And I did it. And I'm so proud of myself that I did it. Because at one point, he said something and I wanted to fall for it. I wanted to believe him. But I knew it was not the truth. So the next day, he leaves. I take him across town to drop him off at wherever he wanted to go. And, you know, he didn't even have any last words for me. Like, the last words he literally said is because that weekend, we bought, last weekend, we bought a TV. Or he bought a TV for the bedroom. It was like $180 he bought it. Last thing he says to me, we're walking out the house to go to the car. You want to chip in for the TV? You want to give me some cash for it? That was the last thing he said to me. Like, are you serious, bro? Like, you think I'm going to chip in for a TV after the way you treated me and everything I've given you? Like, no. He said nothing the whole ride. It was like a 50-minute car ride because we had to go straight across town and it was snow and stuff like that. So it was a 50-minute car ride. And that's the last thing he said to me. He got off the car, didn't say a word. Didn't say I'm sorry. Didn't try to explain himself anymore in the car. He just left. And it was devastating to feel like... I just felt like, what did I do to deserve this? Like, what have I done in life that was so bad that karma is hitting me with all these men? Like, every man I've been with has used me. I have never been in a loving relationship. And all my life, I wished... I wished that I knew what it was like to feel love from a partner and I've never got to experience that and that hurts a lot because I really want to know what that feels like and I thought with him like we were going to be together for the rest of our lives we were going to make this work like he had changed he was going to be a good guy we were going to have a family together we were going to travel set our dreams and do everything like that like I thought this was this was my fairy tale ending like that's what I thought so it's just hard to know it ended like that because like when he was in jail before I blocked him I really had feelings for him like I really liked him and I wanted to be with him when I blocked him that's when the feelings kind of went away but then when he came back, I was like, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to give it a solid try. It's just hard to know, like, people are like that. Like, you played in my face. And I just remember when we met in his, when he was in jail, like, this ain't no jail talk. He would tell me that. This ain't no jail talk. And I've watched enough Love After Lockup to see the jail talk. You know what I'm saying? And I really thought it wasn't jail talk. And all along, that's what it was. So it just goes to show you, like, you don't know anyone. And, like, that puts a damper on everything because now I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. Like, that's, that's really hard because I try to give people the benefit of the doubt at first. But I trusted this man. Like, I really did. I didn't think it was going to come down to him paying women for sex. I just thought like maybe he was flirting with a girl or trying to talk to another girl just to see what's up. I didn't think it was going to be that deep. I didn't think there were going to be multiple, multiple, multiple women. And my body takes things really bad, like physically. I was walking around here like I was just going to fall on the floor. Like, I was so weak. My head was taking it okay. Like, my brain was taking it okay. But my body just felt all the stress from what was going on. Like, I was weak. I was tired. I was exhausted. I could barely walk. I could barely eat. Like, 
it was so difficult that night and the next day. And shockingly, yeah, I cried about it. I haven't cried as hard as I thought I would. I think just because I'm not an emotional person like that and I can to, I tend to take things and then just lock them in a box and don't think about them. And that's my problem sometimes as well, but it just hurts. It hurts to know. Oh my God, I'm going to start crying right now. Um, it hurts to know that someone could do that. It really does it hurts to know that. And I'm just thankful. I'm so thankful that it happened now rather than later. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful that this happened now. Because if it happened later, it could have been worse off. But it's a blessing, a blessing, a blessing, a blessing that it happened two weeks into him being here. You know what I'm saying? Like not even a week and a half into him being here we found this out like i'm glad i made that facebook profile i'm glad i did that because i found out immediately what i needed to know and now i have my house back to myself i'm i'm happy i'm better it's just it's just hard to think like you spent 10 months talking to this man almost every day on the phone talking about some he loves you he would say, I love you to me all the time. He wants to be with me so bad and he's changed and just all this stuff. And just knowing like how much of a lie that was, like it's crazy. But I just wanted to come on here and let you guys know what happened with my boyfriend from prison. So you guys can see what the real tea was about because that chapter of my life is completely over with and it's time to move on and I'm just gonna focus on me and making myself better and get hey y'all so my camera got overheated so I came on my phone to finish wrapping this up but yeah I mean moral of the story is I need to listen to my first instincts I need to realize the red flags that are right in front of me and I need to be obedient to God I need to be obedient to God and this is making me want to have a much better relationship with him and just work on myself because there's something inside of me of where I'm, I'm attracting these kind of people to me because I've been attracting them all my life. Like I said, I've never had a good man. Everyone has literally used me, literally. The last good boyfriend I ever had was my high school sweetheart. That's it. And I am 33 years old. So that says a lot. Um, but I'm just glad I got to get on here and just kind of explain what happened and kind of just share, you know, hopefully other women will just realize the red flags and not get into something like this because this could have been worse. This could have been a worse situation. Um, and once again, I'm just so thankful that it wasn't. I'm so thankful that it happened as soon as it did. So he's out here paying females for sex. Anyways, you guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.